yeah, yeah, move on. <laughs> Thank you. Um, welcome. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so, wow, this has been one of, this is, every year we, we do this, and every year we get to this point, and, and I think, have I seen it all? I certainly haven't. Um, we've had some amazing stuff happening, happening uh, over the past few days. So, um, I'm not going to try and talk through it all, but I just wanted to uh, highlight a couple of things. Kids, we've had kids learning code um, with Code Camp, and I really want to say a special thanks to the Code Camp people, to Tap, to Linda. Um, code Club, Code Club, Code Club. Um, yes, you know what I mean. My brain is fried. Um, and I want to thank Adam as well for, for Adam Conrose for playing a special role there and helping to corral people, uh, small people around. Um, and I am going to ask Margaret to come up and talk about how we're doing the voting. We're going to do the voting for the presentations a little bit differently this year than we've done in the past. Okay, you can't be a hack day and not hack something at the event for the event. So, of course, Twilio, with their clever tools, have done exactly that. Those of you that sat in Sid's workshop yesterday watched him live hacking our audience vote mechanism. I've just posted uh, a post to our blog. There are phone numbers scattered around the room in various places. This number is where you will text the number of your favorite entry. And we'll, out, we'll announce the numbers lots and lots. The numbers of each entry are also on a blog post on the Over the Air website. We'll make sure that you know which number it is. Now, Tulia is clever, of course. Um, every time you update your tweet with a new number, it will take the most recent one. So you can keep sort of a running tally of, oh, I like this one best, I like this one best, and you can go back to the one in the beginning that actually was your favorite of them all. It will just take the last tweet. No, you, you mean text. I mean text. My apologies, <laughs> I mean text. I mean SMS. I mean, you know, I mean text. Code camp text. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was my turn. <laughs> my turn. Yes, I mean texting. I mean SMSing. So you're texting. You're texting to the phone numbers around the room and also on our blog post, and we'll announce it one last time and get it on the screen at the end of the demos. But keep tra we'll, we'll help you keep track of what number they are, so you can keep track of your favorites, okay? Clear-ish? As much. Thank you. <laughs> SMS-based voting. Who the thunk? Who the thunk? Anyway. We need the first five teams. We are going to call up our first time five teams. So the first five teams are and can I ask them to come up to that side of the stage, please? Um, to the, uh, the left-hand side. Um, stage right, Dan. Stage right. Stage right. Sorry. Um, quantified self. Uh, sorry. Time timelines for the National Museum of Computing. Song Dash. B chord. Uh, quantified self. Those are the teams. And uh, run... First run. No, first. This is always the exciting bit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Feel the tension just. Come on up. Come on up to the right here. Nice right. right. We're going to get you hooked up. Go around. This is it going to work? We're building momentum. We're building into it. Is that, it's a slow growth thing? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to play some music? No. <laughs> I've got some music while they said that. That's okay. No music. Can, can you play when, you know, it's important to note that our, um, our presenters are only going to have 90 seconds to tell you their whole life story and what they've, what they've built. Um, and at the end of that 90 seconds, they will hear, not this. They won't hear this. What will they hear? We can make it work. <laughs> they'll, they'll hear an annoying beeping noise. They'll hear an annoying beeping noise. <laughs> they can't still not ready. 
you love it when a phone comes together? Because I do. See, the thing is, Margaret's had the next in my spreadsheet, and I don't know what it means. Okay. Margaret, what does X mean? They're not okay. here! So, quantified self is a no show. Um, so, can I ask Super I to come up to the stage as well, please? Super I, Team Super I. Okay. All right, I reckon we can go. All right, I think we'll start. I'll shut up after this and then get on with it. But I reckon the first uh, is going to be podium number. Oh, hang on. No, 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 we're swapping. What? <laughs> this. It's a smooth system. It works every year. But Margaret's changing the numbers. I told you we needed the radio. <laughs> oh, Margaret, are we happy with the podium numbers? It's almost like I warned everybody that that would happen. <laughs> are, we, are we happy now? Okay, so timelines for TMOC. It's podium number three. And they are, if you want to vote for them, the number three. After this, Dan, I'm shutting up and it's all down to you. Okay. No, we're put from three. <laughs> what number am I? Up, down, up, right? Uh, you're four. <laughs> Dear Lord. No. There is no, like, math. Who is timelines for TMOC? Put your hand up. That's it. That's right. Okay, you're on. You're on. Okay. But you've got no input. I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't. So, there is something to see. Oh, there's some, I, yeah, I, I want to. We have no input from your, from your, doc, from your thing. What was that? From your laptop. We don't have an input from you. Your laptop. Oh, there ah, okay. 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 We, okay, we're starting the timer now. Go. All right, um, so um, the National Museum of Computing was looking for a timeline app that ran in the browser that they could use to put content in from their exhibits. They needed something near mortals could um, edit and manage, preferably via, via spreadsheet, uh, that can embed a lot of different kinds of media, runs in a browser, works on a lot of devices, uh, something that can really express the depth and the interest of the museum exhibits. Um, I found some open stuff stores to build on. It was a lot harder than it sounds. Um, but the, it's you, it's built with a Google spreadsheet, um, and it's live updating, so if you create these timelines, as soon as you make changes here, they are reflected in the timelines that are published in the app that I built. And the app here, um, deployed on Heroku, um, you saw I just made that change to this timeline. These things are embedded via this, the Google spreadsheet. You can embed all sorts of things, including YouTube, um, and there's several different um, timelines that are here all very snazzy, and of course this all works on device. Uh, here's the same thing in the iOS simulator. Um, it, it has touch events, does swipe, um, and the goal is to be very easy to update, very easy to maintain. The, the site is, uh, the web app is a site that's static, easy to deploy, all done. Thank you. Okay, and that is Timelines for TM MOC, and that is voting number three for your voting pleasure. Okay, uh, next up is Song Dash. Song Dash on podium number four, please. Okay. Song Dash. Cool, so, um, oh, loud. So if um, you've got Sugar Buzz on like me, this might be good for you. Okay. Bored of uh, running the same place, same time, get the same people, same journey. Mm -hmm. Song Dash, get from A to B before the song ends. So we download the top ten, it's amazing. Woo, the top ten. We change the thing. Actually, four minutes. I want to go near four minutes. That sounds good. Let's pick this track. Uh, how fast are we going to run? We're going to run. Oh my god, it's a bear! Oh, here we go. So now it's going to hopefully load a map. We'll be on the map. Our destination will be on the map. And it's not loading. It looks good on here. It looks crap there. Uh, there are two dots on here. One's me, one's my destination. I have to get there as quickly as possible. Um, if I don't get there in time, I get eaten by a bear. If I do get there, I get a trophy. And it's single player, single run at the moment, but you can do multiplayer. You don't have to be in the same part of the world. You can run against your mates, even if they're in different places. And you can do... There goes the music. Uh, and you can do outrun-style gates, where you have to get to the next gate to get the opportunity to do the next one. Endurance races. And there you go. See, SE, I just got eaten by a bear. There we go. Uh-huh. <laughs> Back away slowly. Are we done? 
about 15 seconds. All right, thanks. All right, that was Song Dash, and that is voting, voting number four. Voting number four for Song Dash. Uh, now, uh, before I uh, ask the next uh, team to present, I'd like to ask the next four teams to come up. Uh, that would be Team Watchbog, Team Eureka Epiphany, uh, Epiphany Aid, Team Are You In, Team Stereo Cloud, maybe Stereo Cloud. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so, next on stage, I am asking Team B Chord on podium number five to give me your best. B Chord, um, here to demonstrate an EYRS feature called um, Eye Beacons, which uses Bluetooth Low Energy to give you dis um, to interface with other uh, Bluetooth enabled devices and give you distance and other, other different information. My original idea was to make uh, a music generating app based on how close you are from. Um, uh, from, from, a, from a screen, so I've got a couple of people here who have enabled apps. This machine here is acting as a beacon, and our little handhelds are generating cones based on how far away we are. So you can hear this one here, I don't know if you can hear it, this one's playing a nice low beacon sound. And everyone else is going to make different sounds depending on how far away they are or not. Um, we've also done some work to try and get the sound, it's a, it's a two times four bar tune with some um, overlay. Uh, melodies and uh, the DK frequency as well, so we're matching up the time to that. Uh, we had hoped to do a bit more, we had hoped to be able to do a very close how close you are, and it's quite difficult using this stuff because there's different kind of machines and we really should have done a bit more calibration. Um, but we did the best we could, but we learned quite a lot doing it, and it's a nice icon. Thank you. All right. That's all we can have for. Okay, that was Team B Chord, and they are voting number five. Voting number five. Okay, next I want to call up, or I want to ask to present uh, Run for us, Run. Is anybody in there? Run up. Okay. Oh, I get it. Okay, <laughs> clever. Okay. Uh, that was an introduction of the application that we have developed. It's an application for people that don't run usually. Sorry for my voice, I have been running. <laughs> uh, imagine that you run every day like one mile or two miles. At the end of the month, uh, you have run like maybe 40 miles or 50 miles. That is more than a marathon. So the idea of the application. <coughs> is to be able to run big distances in short distances. So for example, we can run around Buckingham Palace. Or run the London Marathon or Boston Marathon. For example, we can run the, Lon the London Marathon, we can start, and it will start counting. So if we go back and we start again running the next day, we will start on that, and on that position. So we will achieve a bigger goal rather than a small one. So it's a motivation for people. There are also the story and some trophies. For example, at the end of running, <laughs> In the Lucky Camp Palace, you can have a, a bonus, like, okay, the dog of the queen has escaped, run for it, run for one mile, and if you get it, well, okay. okay. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right, we're getting into the swing of things now. So the next team uh, that I'd like to ask to present is Team Super I. Uh, sorry, run. that was Run For Us Run, by the way, and they are voting number six for the audience favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, Super I now, uh, take it away. Hi, everyone. Uh, Super I is using Air Dressfa to help users do eye testing rather than uh, instead of touch screen. And it comes with a free alarm as well and help you remind you your eye need. Take a rest. 
Okay, this symbol, the open part of the letter indicates the direction. For example, this one is uh, the direction is the right way. Okay, I can wave my hand. So follow the instruction on the screen. Hold your, uh, uh, hold your arm, and then next side, close your left eye, and then, oh, this uh, right direction is uh, left. Oh, I'm making a mistake. Oh, it's shake. So at the end, you will get the result of the testing. And then it comes with the alarm. Okay, stop. Actually, this one, you got eight directions, so it's more difficult. So here, let's go the alarm. Why is it not working? Sorry. Okay, this alarm. So you can move uh, move your eye, uh, hand up, increase the time, and uh, move your hand down to increase uh, decrease time, and then you can start. Okay, you can pause it, and you can start again. So this is still eye to help you look after your eye. It also ben uh, I mean it's also benefits the user they can't you know speak English or okay uh, before before the next demo can we uh, have uh, four more teams up on uh, stage right here uh, stereo cloud air sum pay a pal uh, and picto cross um, and now what uh, and that was super I by the way and their voting number is voting number seven um, so uh, next I would like to call a uh, watch bog watch bog Uh, it's your moment in the sun. <laughs> My moment to figure out how full screen works on Chromebook Pixel. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so that's all right. So I've input. Okay. Um, maybe we, we can we can just use the camera. Okay. Cool. All right. So this is this is not gone well, has it? Right. So yeah, I'm Watchbug. I did a demo, but that's not worked. No, that's not worked either. So the basic idea was uh, I wanted to do home security for everyone. I wanted to do a hardware hack. Um, and I was trying to think of what does everyone have in their home that could potentially be used as a sensor. Uh, and so I was thinking about that Jurassic Park scene, um, where the cup, the T-Rex comes through, and the water shakes, and uh, they, there's a big tense moment where like, well, what's coming? And then, so I got thinking, what if we put an accelerometer in a float in the toilet, attach it to an Arduino, attach that to a web server, and then had a phone to keep, tra uh, keep track of the status of it. And I actually have, if it's going to work, um, probably not a mobile app on Firefox OS where you get the wave motion from the uh, web interface which is fed by the Arduino um, so you can see when you're out of the house whether anyone's walking around your house and triggering ripples in your toilet. <laughs> <laughs> the best bit about this entire hack is the name and the slightly scary picture which is Watchbog and the streaming toilet. Um, so what works about this, it's a Firefox OS app with the wave motion being drawn by a paper.js. Um, the API is provided by a Haskell yes or that. Um, and the Arduino with the accelerometer all works. The missing link was the Raspberry Pi which failed last night. Um, so we've kind of got the internet of things without, with the things but not the internet. So bits and bobs work. Um, but yeah, so unfortunately that's our hack. Um, okay. Yeah, thanks. That's good. Um, bonus points for Firefox OS. Uh, okay, uh, next up, uh, I'd like to call, oh, that was uh, Watchbog, and they are voting number eight, by the way. So next up is Eureka Epiphany Aid, uh, and they are voting number nine. Take it away. Is it up? Okay, that's not worked properly. Um, just pitch one. Okay, basically, so every knows you have your best ideas in the shower, but unfortunately when you're in the shower, your hands are wet and you don't have anything to write on. So basically the point of Eureka is the Shower Epiphany Aid app. And what you do is you go to shower, um, and then you launch the app, there's a button you press to say, I'm currently showering. Obviously you don't take the app into the shower, that would be stupid. Um, just leave it kind of next to the shower. And basically, so it waits for you to say a keyword, which is obviously Eureka after the famous Archimedes. Um, 
And once you've said you repair it, it'll then start recording what you say so you can pitch your idea to it. So you're like, oh, I need to make uh, socks for cats. This is a great idea. Um, and then once you finish, you say Eureka again, it'll stop recording. Um, and then it will play it back to you to make sure it's got what you want. And then it comes with this nice little pop-up box that has it all written down for you. Then you can save this to your phone. Um, it's got two options after that. You can either um, hide your shame, which is delete your terrible idea, or you can send it to your friends and then get them to tell you it's a terrible idea. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Um, it uses the Android speech recognition and text-to-speech services. Um, yeah. Can I download it? Yeah. Oh, please go ahead and switch to the camera. Go Okay, that's all. Cool. You got 15 seconds. Okay, so, we're in the shower, we'll press the shower button. Okay, we say, Eureka! Please give your idea. Socks for cats. Eureka! Please give your socks to cats. <laughs> it's not my fault, it's bad. Inspiring. Uh, <laughs> next we have. Oh, no, we're going to tell what they're going to We just don't have anything to present. All right, all right, wait a second. Next we have Are You In? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that, just to remind everybody, Eureka Epiphany Aid was uh, voting number nine. <laughs> Hello, um, we don't actually have anything to show because as one of our team members said, we actually broke our Raspberry Pi so we can't connect anything to the internet and then we broke our Arduino light strip, which are the two main things. It's what happens when computer scientists play with hardware, I suppose. But um, what we originally were thinking is in Nottingham, all of our student cards have NFC chips and we were really interested as to what we could do with them. A common problem is that people sometimes live in very big houses to bring down bills and things like that. It's not always possible to know quickly if everyone else in your flat's in. What we were thinking is having an LED strip with names next to each one. When you walk into your house, you could scan yourself in and your light would show up. And when you leave again, you could scan yourself out again. And that way, when someone comes in, they can quickly know, are my housemates in? When I leave, do I need to lock the door? Am I going to lock anyone in by accident? And to further this, we could then change it to change your state. You could say, I'm sleeping, please don't bug me. Say, I'm trying to work, please don't bug me. Say, I'm trying to cook, just don't bug me. <laughs> it's pretty much the theme. All right. Okay, uh, and that was voting number uh, 10. So um, now I would like to call up, uh, up the next four teams. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We're a well oiled machine here. Um, so first of all, uh, can I just make one final call for Team Stereo Cloid? Uh, if you are around, uh, please come up. Um, you only get this one chance for fame. Uh, <laughs> uh, so then, uh, can I please call up uh, Team? Uh, Quidini Beacon, Team Clude something, uh, Team the inscrutably named Team Alistair McDonald, um, and Team I Roll. Okay? And now I'm going to ask Team Airsum to present. No input on the two. Can you try again? We don't. We're not getting an input. What? We're not getting an input from your from your laptop. Yeah. What do I have to do? Try. Oh, it out. Try turning it off and on again. <laughs> Can somebody switch? There we go. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. Well, it's slightly skewed. Never mind. Okay. Um, awesome. Right, so we did do something for cyclists that have to put up with all these cars spewing out nasty stuff. So, uh, we have a, the, the, our motto is to stay clear of the foul air using airsome technology. Bluetooth, mobile, mobile data, um, cloud processing, all cross-platform, HTML5, etc. With added over the air. So our system consists of a Bluetooth, a Bluetooth sensor module, um, very attractively packaged, um, 
a phone, um, a bicycle, uh, an internet, a, a store for the data, some computing, and some other stuff if we can get hold of it. Um, there's the hardware, and you can see the attractive uh, equipment fitted to it. Um, and uh, then when you uh, actually drive it around and you look at um, what comes back, you get the stuff on the screen that shows you where the dirty, foul, disgusting air is. And depending on where you drive, uh, it shows you different things. Um, I want to acknowledge some people, like Hugh Nels, a, a friend of ours who, who suggested it, Air Quality Egg Team, who made the sensor board, and various experts advise us. Plus, our parents would have to stay up late to do it. Um, embarrassing bits is mm, don't mention calibration, please. Um, and we, the lab, the calibration lab didn't fit in the car, so we couldn't bring it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was Airsum, and they are voting number 12. Uh, for best in sh for for best audience paper. Now uh, the next up is PayPal. PayPal. Brilliant. Brilliant. So, uh, PayPal, very original logo and uh, name. Um, so the idea Agent is we Christiana. wanted to make uh, payments as simple as possible. So the idea is uh, we've connected Twitter with uh, PayPal, so you can tweet at over the air. Thank you for being so awesome. Here's five thousand pounds. And then they will send, it, send the payment to so, um, That's not going to be secure enough, so we have some security. Yeah, yeah so we'll go through the demo. Uh, you sign in with your, your Twitter first, and then you feel that signs you around. I've already authorized, so it's really quick. So I'm Tick Bay, sign in with your PayPal. So then now, if you're counting the number of times you're authenticating, this is, you can see how secure it is. Uh, So then now we're signing with PayPal, and here we'll do clever things so that we get to uh, take money out of your bank uh, without you knowing. So you log into both of those, you're then sent back to the app, where you'll be then offered a chance to send a tweet. So you can now send a tweet, this is all set up to send a pound to Ali. So we'll send that. That's now been sent. So now the extra authentication is, uh, we've just whacked in Twilio as, uh, as well, so we'll hopefully receive a phone call on my phone to see if uh, that's what I wanted to do. And here it is. Ooh. So, I'll listen to that. Hello there, Dylan Jones. You are receiving this call because you needed to pay a pal. Enter the four-digit code now and make sure you enter it directly. Your phone and you type that in and then that will confirm the payment and that will be sent through. <coughs> so that is paying a pal really easily. Wow. This one. Okay. All right. So uh, now I would like to, before we uh, move on, I'd like to ask the next four teams to come up. Um, that is Tap Tap Pew Pew, uh, Wireless Tweet Counter and Temperature Display. Uh, come on. Steganaga says something or other. And Keithon. Please. Okay. All right. I hope that was. That was PayPal, and that was audience uh, vote number uh, thirteen. Number thirteen. But uh, right now, I'd like to ask Picto Cross to present. Okay. So this is Picto Cross, which is a mashup of dictionary and cyclocross. I can't think why no one's done that before. Um, so. What you do, you select a shape that you're going to then draw. So we're going to do the square here. Um, it will show you a map of your location, which for the purposes of this demo is somewhere in Seattle. And then you, and the square you've got to do. We know where we are, so you're going to say, right, let's go and draw the square. And we draw it by running, cycling, or in the case of this, Trace using some kind of jet fighter given the speed it's going at uh, to get as good a square as we can get. You score points based on how fast you do it, how big the shape you've drawn is, how accurately it was compared to the uh, square. And um, yeah, I could probably talk more sensibly if I'd had some sleep. Um, in a moment, 
28 seconds or so, it's going to finish and then um, I'll show you the scoring. There you go. If you work out that distance in that time, it's about 152 kilometers an hour. Um, I don't advise trying to cycle your cyclocross bike at that speed. But that's <laughs> the game. Okay. Okay, our next team is Quidini Beacon. Uh, sorry, that was Pictocross, and they are uh, vote number uh, voting number 14. 14. Uh, so uh, Quidini Beacon now, please. Uh, so yeah, we've also used uh, the iBeacon stuff in um, uh, iOS 7, and basically the idea is that um, store uh, members of staff in the department store can have uh, staff out. And then the customer will also have customer facing app as well, so that as they come into the store, um, they basically get detected, they can uh, appear up on the SAP app and, and find information about where they are in the store. Um, can we cut to the uh, video? Camera? Mm. Camera? So, uh, yeah, the, staff, the customer app here is uh, currently searching the store, and if I just enable uh, our iBeacon, um, it should then detect that it's in the store and the, uh, the staff app has appeared with a little picture of myself and uh, I can see that I'm currently in the menswear department. Uh, we were implementing kind of a distance thing at the moment that's just showing sort of the, uh, the signal strength um, and then uh, you would obviously have more beacons around the store but we've just had to emulate it with this unfortunately. Um, and then on the uh, customer app so that's now just changed to say that I'm in the cafeteria. Um, I can then also click to say that I want some help, and that sends a message straight onto the uh, onto the uh, staff app as well. If yeah. pushing is working, which currently not. Um, so basically, so the staff can say, right, okay, they, they can see that somebody needs some help, and they can go and find them and, uh, and give them that, that, that support straight away. Uh, that's about it. Okay. Thank you. Chilling vision of things to come. Okay, um, Clude, Clude Do. Now. That was 15. That was 15. Thank you for calling me out on that. That was Quidini Beacon, and that was uh, voting number 15. Now I'd like to call Clude Do, not this guy. Right? All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm going to start. Um, before we begin, can you please text begin to that number up there? That will begin the game. Basically, uh, I don't know how many of you remember the old text-based adventure games. This is a text-based, text-based adventure game with a multi-user element. This is the future, I'm telling you. You don't need graphics, you just need gaming. What we're going to have here is, if you scroll down, this is a map. And we can see that as people move north, south, east, west, you can have a look. You are going to enter the town of Cludu. You are going to solve the mysteries. You're going to solve the questions. You're going to go shopping. You're going to do everything all in your imagination. We have sewers. We have the castle of Cludu with the evil King Cashmore, which you must defeat, for he is, you know, the keeper of the beanbags, and you need to protect the city. You must see, we've already got four people playing right now. We have over 60, 60 rooms you can go through. You can have a look. Uh, there are keys. There are chests. Um, if you don't want to find the key to open the door, we also have in-app payments, whereas you can also text <laughs> by key if you want to do that. We'll send you to PayPal for 15p, uh, which we'll donate to the uh, thing. We'll let you uh, <laughs> buy. We'll let you buy the key and, and you know defeat the evil King Cashmore, who does that. Now this is all. Um, this is compatible on all mobile phones. This is this is why we've entered everything because it's compatible on Nokia. It's Windows HDR5. It's iPhone. Even your 3310, ladies and gentlemen. If if you want to get it out, you can play this game. Look how many people we've got playing now. Um, so there's lots of stuff to do. There's a, there's a whole lot of expansion packs we can put into this. Have a go. 60 rooms. Do you want to say anything? No. Okay. I think we're... Uh, are we early? That's the first presentation we've ever done. We're early. Any questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Keep playing. Uh, have fun. Goodbye. Okay. All right. And that was uh, voting number 16. So now I would like to... That was Clu 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 now I would like to uh, uh, call uh, up, the, uh, up the next four teams so that we have uh, you're, you're ready to go. And those are teams Turf, Team Glamour, Team Virus, and Team Meetup. That's Turf, Glamour, Virus, and Meetup. And uh, the next up is Alistair McDonald. Uh, what number was that one? Sorry, that was team. That was sixteen. 
Then that's it. That was that was Team Kudu, and that was sixteen. Um, so the next uh, the next one up is Alistair McDonald. Yeah, it basically I have to don God to bed. I have to do a bit more programming. I managed to do a sensible app. Somehow I got volunteered to write something on the Nokia. Um, uh, it, uh, this is the, the app. Uh, originally I wanted to just point stuff at the crowd and, uh, and actually count how many people uh, are there. Unfortunately, uh, the instructions are all in Chinese, so I had no luck with that. But I did, I did almost blind myself with the flash when trying to do this whole brilliant idea. So this still does face detection. So if I hold it up, hopefully it will detect my face. This isn't working very well. It, where's that light? Oh, well, but um, when it's turned on, uh, the light's on until it detects a face. Fortunately, with this phone, it also detects light, so we're going to have to do this under the covers. <laughs> right. I think this is going well. At the minute, hopefully, it's not it's detecting me and not turning on. Oh, right, I pressed the wrong button. There we go, it's not detecting me, but if it detects me, it should hopefully turn off. It's not working, never mind. <laughs> there is another small flaw in the plan, is when it does actually turn off, it can't see me anymore, so it turns back on. It was a stupid idea from the start. <laughs> it's extremely frightening. Okay, so that was Alistair McDonald, and that was voting number 17. Voting number 17. Uh, okay, so next up is I roll. <coughs> uh, I roll. Uh, am I on the screen? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, I didn't know what what to show until yesterday when I went to the museum. So I saw this logarithmic scale as a slide ruler, and I implemented the uh, what I think is quite realistic uh, physics inside this uh, ruler. Uh, you can you can even see the what is it British patents here in the bottom. Uh, it's some number, but uh, of course we cannot stop, stop here. Uh, well, going fast forward, uh, we need to be iOS 7 compatible. And here's the trick how to make it iOS 7 compatible in three or four steps. First, you do, basically you flatten your interface, you <laughs> make all the phones uh, ultra narrow, then you do the next step, you add some gradients. <laughs> And so, uh, the final touch is the, obviously the blur effect. So now, now you see the complete transition to iOS 7, and these uh, small follows, uh, they're not just blur floors from iOS 6, you can, you can see the clock if you look. Uh, uh, that was uh, arrow number 18, and uh, oh yeah, I'm on time. Fantastic. Okay, that was I rule number 18. Number, voting number 18. Next up, we have Tap Tap. Pew Pew! So, we made Tap Tap Pew Pew! So, <laughs> so the code's up on tacran.github.io slash tp. So, there's a story about being in the future, and you can go read it. Um, but let's get to action. Okay. I shouldn't have prepared earlier. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so you kind of stick around. It's supposed to be played on a tablet with your friends in person. Um, we could have done it online, but where's the social fun in that? Like, you need people in your life. Um, yeah, so, yeah, so, and we could have given you sound effects, but then where's, where's the fun in that? You gotta make the pew pew sound yourself. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's, that's it. Uh, we we use Raphael JS and um, Backbone, and yeah, it's a web thing, so you can access it on your phones, and it's pretty responsive too. Cool. Awesome. All right, that is tap tap pew pew, and uh, it's uh, voting number nineteen. Uh, next up, we have. Wireless tweet counter and temperature display. Um, take it away. All right, um, put this together. It's basically wireless temperature sensor. What are those? Been monitoring the temperature in the, uh, the mansion when we've been over there. Displays readings on a colored display. Uh, pushes temperature readings out to Zyvely. So I've been monitoring them yesterday and today. It retrieves tweets. So if you tweet to hash OTA13, the counter on here will be incremented. Um, and it also shows them up on the uh, the LEDs because everybody likes LEDs. 
and big flashing uh, lights on. So you can see it on there. Um, show you some pictures of the other bits. Oh, there's the. Uh, <laughs> I've got another picture of it there, but uh, you can see 34 so far and lots of nice LEDs. Temperature sensor picture here. There's another picture of the uh, the display here. This was from earlier on. It's 70 tweets it counted. Um, receiving it all on the laptop through this other uh, dongle. Um, they are reading the tweets. That's from earlier. It's all put together back end with this thing called uh, Node Red. Uh, just basically drag drop, join all your inputs outputs together, create these fantastic applications, uh, push things out to Zyvis. That's from earlier. Temperature <laughs> drafts from uh, this morning. Um, thank you. Wow. Okay, that was wireless fleet counter and temperature display. Uh, might want to work on the marketing there. Um, the, uh, the voting number is 20 for that. Um, and now we have, uh, coming up on stage, Steganagrafasaurus. All right. Okay, so in the spirit of Lexi Park, I decided to do a cryptography-related app. So Steganagrafasaurus is a steganography app that will allow you to encode um, secret messages into pictures. So if you go in code, you select an image, and here's one I just took of the audience. So we write something in here, see whatever switch comes up with. We encode the message, here's our image. We can either send it via email or whatever method we choose. In this case, I'm going to save it, so we can use it on, our, on this own app. So it's just saving, and then we can decode it in the app. So we select the image that we've just made, which is here. Now you can see, it's just uh, it's deciphered the code that's been saved inside this image. So what it's doing is it's taking the message we've got, encoding it in binary, and then saving it to the least significant bit of each pixel. So each red, green, and blue value is taking one bit of the data from the image. And you can save quite a lot of information in each picture because you've got the width times the height times the three pixels, and you can fit quite you can fit quite a lot of data in. So the idea is that you could hide another image inside it, or even a tech, even um, any kind of binary file you can think of. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Very, very cool. Um, all right, next up, uh, and that was sorry, that was I want to say the name again, the the, the, the sonography thing, and uh, it's uh, team number voting number twenty one, voting number twenty one. Uh, next up, we have uh, Turf, T -E, Turf, Team Turf. <coughs> So we decided to bring together geofencing and cats, and uh, what we came up with is TERF, which is spelled the Scouse Web. Uh, it's a geofenced hyper-local web app that can be used anywhere, and if we log in as Simon there, um, you can use this anywhere that's got GPS, you, and you can create a zone of conversation. So when individuals walk into this, into, onto your TERF, um, you can begin to engage with them in conversation. Oh, this guy, you can visit the app right there. Could you flip to the screen? Yeah, anybody can access this right now and engage in the conversation as we've got two rooms set up, one at the front and one at the back of this tent. Um, those guys at Blackwells could use this to engage with our customers in stores, for example. Um, say you're in the biography section, we could uh, engage with people that are standing there and through our own API push forward promotions uh, or relevant content to that particular subject area. More widely, it could be used at festivals, hack days, conferences in universities or even whilst in a traffic jam to find out what's going on. Um, we've got two rooms set up. We've also added a cat API, as you'll see there, uh, where you get a random image of a cat as your user the picture there. Um, and the admin remains as the grumpy cat at all times. And once you've left that area, um, you can't see any of the messages from the room that you've walked away from. And that is Tan. Fabulous. Okay, so that was uh, Turf, and that was voting number 23. Voting number 23. Okay, so next up, I would like to call the next four teams, or uh, possibly five teams up. So the first one is uh, Cruising with Turing. A little edgy there, okay. Uh, the next, uh, Kimono Windows App 8 app. Windows Phone App 8 app. Uh, iCat. Another cat's theme, the sensing a theme here. Um, meet app and tracker cube. So that's cruising with Turing, Kimono Windows Phone 8 app, 
iCat, Neat App, and Tracker Cube. Please come to the stage. All right, our next up is Glamour. So I guess like a lot of you, I spend a lot of time using GitHub for work, and one of my favorite features is the network graph they have, but it turns out it doesn't work so well on mobile devices, so I thought, let's see uh, how much of it I can make overnight. So we have uh, the same repository here loaded up into an iPad. You can scroll back through the history. You can uh, tap commits to see the, uh, the details of them. Uh, but one of the big shortcomings of GitHub's uh, native one is uh, it doesn't show the tags. So it's quite nice to be able to look back through your history and see all the different tags that went together in it. Uh, you can see how the graph got all complicated and messy in the past. Uh, but then you can also you know, play around a little bit more and say, oh, I'm not interested in seeing all the branches right now, just some of them. And they all nicely in and out of place. Uh, you can even sort of collapse it down and say, you know what, the history doesn't matter that much. All that really matters is the branches and the tags. I just want to see those condense. Um, so yeah, just playing around with seeing how well you can uh, redraw the graph of a repository on the fly. Great. Okay. All right, that was Team Glamour. Uh, and uh, voting number is 24 on that one. All right. Next up is Team Virus. Team Virus. Hey, bro. Okay, we wanted to uh, play with iBeacons as well. Um, I'm going to have a look at Bluetooth LE, we want to try and get hardware together, we want to combine phones, do all that kind of stuff. Um, we didn't want to do the usual kind of stuff, so we wanted to do a game of global mass domination where the beacons come together and then fight using advanced viruses. And we ended up making rock, paper, scissors, lizard, and spot. So it's just a bit easier. Uh, so beacons can either be out of range, inside range, get near range, in which case we're allowed to fight, or they can be immediately together. So we had to play around and figure out what those distances were. Um, basically we have players come in, we have beacons that act as weapons caches, and then we have a dueling zone, and in the dueling zone you scrap. So let's have a fight between these two guys. Do you want to go over there Steve? So the beacons will come together, you'll see that it's a little bit slow to update, come in Andy. We should see a change of colour as they get closer together. Have a bit of luck. We've gone to orange, they're in fight zone, they can make a selection on which virus they want to fight with. They can fight. <laughs> and we'll have a winner or a loser if it gets up to the end. No! Oh, fantastic. And that is, that is as far as it got. And um, we didn't get as far as building a cache, a weapon cache that's next to okay. Fantastic. Okay, that was Virus, and that is voting number 25. 25. Uh, next up is Meetup. Oh, it's backwards. Okay. So, is that okay? Shall we move on? Um, you need a moment. Hang on. No, it's alright. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, right, I decided to make something that I've been wanted for years, and it started out with this phone. In 2005, the Nokia 5140 that had a GPS shell you put on, and you could send your position by text to your friends. I thought, what a great idea. And that app never really quite arrived. And we've got bit solutions now, like um, Google Attitude, but people think it's a bit big brother, really, and, and has um, battery issues. Um, and then there's all great apps on iOS, but not for any other platform. Um, and they all cry global internet and um, a login and fast, really. So what I did is just made exactly that. A way to send your location by SMS um, with a special smart link that um, if you have the app, it will absorb it and show it to you. Um, and you can, you can follow the arrow to your friend. Um, if you don't have the app, it will let you install the app. Or if you don't have a phone that's paddled with, you can just see the map on a web view. So this is what it looks like. You can have the last things you received. You send your location, and then when you're ready to send, you press send. Anyone in your address book can receive it, and if you don't have the app on the left, if you do, it's on the right. And uh, I can show you now quickly. You want to view over here? Okay. 
There it is. And just use that to find where you put it. Okay. That's it. All right. Oh, that's today. I'm going to play. I don't know. I can make the colleagues make it for me. Oh, bonus points. Definitely. Um, okay, so uh, before we have our next presentation, can I... Oh, hey, careful there. Keep it clean. All right. That was meetup, and that was number 26, voting number 26. Voting number 26. Uh, before I ask the next presenter to start, can I have the next four teams up? Uh, team Trekker Cube, Team Hack the Planet, or the other guy, uh, Team Virtual Archery, and Team Chav on the Run. That's Chav on the Run, Hacker Cube, Hack the Planet, or the other guy, or and Virtual Archery, please. Okay, next up, I've got Cruising with Turing. Please do keep it clean. But... It is. It's great time. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Ian. This is Alan. Uh, we make uh, games and apps in Chron SDK. Chron SDK is really well known 2D only um, SK for iOS, making iOS and Android apps. In the new version, which we have access to the beta, you can distort the polygons of the, of the, the squares. So we, we have a, a grass texture and we've, we've distorted it and drag faded it so it looks like uh, it looks kind of a pseudo, a pseudo 3D effect. So for the game, we wanted to make uh, a game by Alan Turing. Um, cryptography. Um, games app seem to have kind of been done to death, although that image one was fantastic. Um, so we, we made uh, a, a, something a little bit different. So there is some sound. The sound is actually um, cruising and touring in Bletchley Park. Um, the sound is Vera Lynn. We will, we will meet again. Um, you can wink at people. <laughs> and if they like what they see, they'll uh, smile or uh, respond nicely. If they don't, then they might frown at you. Um, get to enjoy the lovely Bletchley Park, park as we all had this, uh, this couple of days. We hope to get a bit further with the gameplay, adding maybe undercover police officers, etc. Um, and that, that, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. That is fantastic. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up, I have. Oh, sorry. That was voting number 27, Cruising with Turing, and voting number 27. Um, next up, please, is Kimono Windows Phone 8 app. Hi, so um, I had about an hour yesterday to actually do some hacking, so I wanted to see what I could do with Windows Phone 8 just without actually having to install Windows, because that would take me a lot more than an hour. Uh, so I played with the online app, and I managed to build something for Kimono, not Kimono, yes. Uh, which is an, they're an online backstore, and this is the app that I managed to build, which kind of pulls in the RSS feed, it pulls in user pictures, and it allows you to just directly shop from the app. Of course, that sends you to the website. Um, I was quite impressed how easy it was to do. Most of this is directly from their own RSS feeds. There's no backend that I've actually built here, and it's all done in an hour. So you can imagine how far I could get with a few more hours. Um, so yeah, it was just a little experiment for me. Thank you. Yeah. In the U.S., they call it kimono. Um, okay. Uh, next up, we ha and that was that was voting number twenty-eight. Kim Kinomo Windows Phone Eight app. Uh, so next up, we have iCat. Hi, uh, my name's Sam. Uh, this is Oscar. He's one of my cats. Um, we have a lot of cats. Uh, I had a bit of a problem. Oscar likes wardrobes. He goes and hides in the wardrobe. You open the wardrobe, take the t-shirt out, and he jumps in, lost. Um, we spend lots of time before we go out of the house trying to figure out where the cats are, make sure they're not shut in wardrobes and things. So, spirit of this hack day, I'm taking cats and uh, eye beacons, so Bluetooth low energy. Uh, what we have now is, I couldn't bring Oscar with me today because, you know, he didn't have a ticket, but uh, we have a stand-in stub cat for the purpose of testing. So this is my test cat. Uh, this cat has an eye beacon attached to its collar on the back here, so it's a little Bluetooth low energy board um, on the cat. So as the cat wanders around the house, um, I have iPads and things around the house. Uh, there's a little app that I've got running which is monitoring the eye beacon, and 
obviously the second it's come in the room, it's set roughly for the range of a room, so the idea being as the cat walks into different rooms, uh, this will update, refresh that, um, this will update the, the server. So we have a central uh, web page, if you switch back to the computer, if I do it, I'll relaunch the app. Oops. Uh, as the cat walks in the room, it should, oh, that one, uh, update and tell me he's in the lounge. There we go, bang, lounge. So you can see, list of where the cats are, who's in which room. All right. All right, so next up, uh, so, uh, sorry, before uh, we move on, I'd like to ask another four teams to please come up. Uh, those are teams Obsessive Runner, teams Cypher Cruncher, Team Internet of Sings, and uh, Team QR Buy. Uh, and our next hack uh, is uh, Hack the Planet or the Other Guy. And sorry, that was iCat and it was voting number 29. Voting number 29. So now we have Hack the Planet or the Other Guy. Hi everybody. Oh, hello. Hi everyone. Um, we're going to have a live demo as I talk. So, Hack the Planet or the Other Guy is a game. It's a game for social events such as Open the Air or WWDC. Um, and the idea is uh, it helps you integrate with and socialise with other people who you don't know. And we do that using mobile phones because they're so great at getting people to talk in real life. And we're using it with computer games because it's uh, competitive computer games because this is such a good way to get people to become friends. So the idea of this game is it'll uh, GPS pair you with other people around the event and you've got to run up to them and hack their phone. You get nearby and it will give you a notification. You play a Simon Says game as you can see here and, you, and then uh, you, you effectively hack their phone. They get to defend against you. Whoever gets more points in the game uh, gets some, uh, some, some points, some credits. Uh, and uh, we have a, a sort of a leaderboard that is built up over time. Um, there's a central Node.js server running this. We have clients for iOS, uh, for Android, and for uh, HTML5. The Android one is the one that's most fully featured at the moment. Um, and there's some sweet Vangelis style music that I wrote, which you're not hearing at the moment because the phone's too far away from the microphone. Okay, yeah, so now um, uh, Emily's now uh, defending against Chris's attack. Can we get the phone a little bit closer? Is that possible? Can you hear the can you hear the error sound? It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. Very cool. Um that was Hack the Planet or the other guy, and it was voting number fifty-two. Okay, the next one to present will be uh, virtual archery. Virtual archery, please. Is virtual archery ready? Hi. So you can probably guess what my app is uh, about. It's a virtual archery app for when you fancy practicing your archery but you don't have an archery range. So what you get is a nice little 3D view of your target board ahead of you. And you use another phone or piece of paper with a printed 3D marker on it in order to use the draw. And then you pull back one phone from the other and that's you drawing your bow back. And then when you release, or turn your away, haven't quite worked that one out yet. The arrow should fly off and hit the target, but I haven't got any of the animations done yet. So, <laughs> at the moment, you just get a 3D view of the target. <laughs> Very aspirational. Okay. Um, next up, we have Chav on the run. Chav on the. Oh, sorry, that was virtual archery, and it was uh, voting number 33. Running number 33. So next up we have Chav on the run. A lot of running apps in this uh, in this batch. So everybody's on a fitness kick or something. What's going on? Right. So I spend most of my time making very serious sort of business type apps. So I decided I just wanted to have a play and make a game today, really. So I've made this game called Chav on the Run. Uh, using the Coco's 2D framework for iOS. Simple concept basically, it's a side scroller and you have, you're, you're driving into oncoming cars, in the chatty car, <laughs> trying to avoid the traffic. As you progress, your speed builds up, and as your speed builds up, you earn more money, for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and the cars are coming towards you faster and faster. So obviously, 
<coughs> the more you can avoid dodging the cars, the more money you'll bag, and the higher score you'll get. Okay. That's it. Thank you. All right. Our, our next step is Obsessive Runner. So that was Chav on the run, and it was number 34, voting number 34. Uh, next up is Obsessive Runner. Uh, obsessive Runner. Okay. That's you. No input. So, full. No input. Okay. You're on the clock. So, um, yeah, so for those who know me, I'm a bit of, a, of an obsessive runner. Um, so when I came up from Bristol yesterday, um, there's something called Park Run, where you normally I run in Bristol on a Saturday morning for 5K, and they happen all over the country. So what I've done here is taken the Park Run website, which has about seven years' worth of every run that's taken place in the country with every result um, of how long people have taken, etc., and tried to visualise it in different ways. So this is showing um, numbers of runners in different park runs. Um, it shows where people are actually moving between different park runs. So for example, I normally run in Bristol, but I've come to Milton Keynes, and I'm running in Milton Keynes. Where people go, where the fastest times are, and trying to sort of help uh, park runners sort of decide where they should run, who they should be running against, so they're running against the best people so they can get the best time. <coughs> and that's it, really. Okay. Bonus points for the Symbian t-shirt. Okay, uh, next up, uh, I'd like to call up to the stage Makey Makey Car Racy, uh, Team Draw, Team GSM Local, and Team Bletchley Park Rover. Uh, and that was Obsessive Runner, uh, and he is voting number 35. Voting number 35. So, um, can I next have on... Am I right? Mm -hmm. You okay over there? Yeah? Okay. So, <laughs> come on, next up, on my right, Team Cypher Cruncher. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm glad, I'm glad to see everyone here. Uh, uh, today we have an event at a great place, so I decided to build something uh, to show you how it's really difficult to uh, to to uh, to decrypt the cipher, even even the most simple one. So let's imagine you intercepted the message, one word, this one word, and you're trying to decrypt it. You use a, a, a token, a disk, to decrypt it. So uh, you have like a 20, 26 possible combinations to decrypt it. Uh, so you see, so the idea is to know what's the shift, what's the right to shift. So you can, let's say, try, for example, this one. Um, you try J, stands for H. Um, Q states for, for O. Um, T stands for TR. Uh, C, C stands for A. And uh, A stands for Y, for Y, and you, yeah, you guess, you guess the right word. But uh, you see that you need like uh, 26 at least combinations to get the right shift. So it's very difficult uh, to get it from the first time. So it just shows how it's difficult, uh, really, to be quick to cipher. Thank you. Great. Okay, that was Cypher Cruncher, and voting number is 36. Uh, next up, we have Internet of Sings. Internet of Sings. Are you ready? <coughs> yeah, we're, we're not getting an input from you. <laughs> um, so, hello. People will be talking about internet things, but actually I'm more interested in creating internet of things, which is five puns. And also, I thought you, maybe a way to you can prove who you are by singing. Um, so in music, there's a concept of call and response. There's a musical phrase, and then there's a phrase that naturally comes after it, or that everybody knows. <coughs> so the idea here is that um, 
the appropriate point in the transaction, um, a, a phrase is played to you, and you need to sing the right response. Sadly, doing this, I broke one rule about never trying to learn new stuff, because it turns out signal processing isn't trivial, especially in the browser. Um, and so how far I got was, I did capture various responses in my portable studio, as well as my car. Um, pulled out three metrics, which seemed to be plausible. Turns out MacBook microphones aren't very good. So let's see how far it got. I'll try singing here. See what this is going to do for me. Sorry about this, everyone. That's interesting. You didn't hear that for the speakers at all, did you? All right, okay. Well, that was. Let, let me just sing the appropriate response and see what happens. Um, what is the appropriate response? <laughs> Hold on. Right. Da -da, da -da. As if you have a choice. Oh, well, never mind. Um, uh, thank you. Sorry. Okay. I'm actually going to come to the Very brave. Yeah, well. Very extra points. Nobody else should be worried about being embarrassed. Yeah, <laughs> extra extra points. <laughs> um, okay, next up, can we have? Uh, and that was uh, Internet of Things, and it was uh, voting number thirty-seven. Uh, next up is QR by. Yes. Hi everyone. I come here without any idea, and um, I hope the uh, Windows phone is a. Uh, not already there, so I give a chance to test it, how it works, how easy to develop. And I pick an idea, for example, if I have a QR code, well, how can I buy that good, that thing which uh, has, this, uh, has this QR code. So I build this uh, phone up on uh, Windows 8, which is uh, quite fun, I think, after the Android. And, uh, here is the app. It's a very basic one, so I don't need to uh, tell I think more. There is a scan button. I click the scan. And uh, I scan the QR. And uh, after the, the QR process, I get the information which is uh, being to the QR. And uh, I can buy this. So it says for third. So buy now. And it uses uh, the PayPal API. And uh, we go to the PayPal now, and we send box mode. Yes, it takes time. Here we are. And uh, if we put the things like card address, we can buy this item. <coughs> okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, next, that, that was QR buy, and they were voting number 38. Voting number 38. So we're nearly coming to the end of our list here. Uh, the next one is Team Draw. Team Draw. Cool. Hello. Uh, so, yeah, it's myself, Ben, Pete, and Joe are uh, working on this, uh, this app, which is actually a web app, and this is the address on Heroku. Uh, so we, wanted, we came here and wanted to build a, a game that was like a GPS uh, multiplayer game. So you basically run around and play Tron Light Cycles and Yes, yeah, a good idea, right? <laughs> it's like, um, but then, so yesterday we built this this thing which basically uh, allowed us to track all our multiple devices around. You can kind of see from here, uh, the red one is Pete, and uh, me and Joe are, are the random dots just spread around the place. So we figured that if we played that game, Pete would always win. Uh, we didn't want that. Uh, so we came with another idea today, which was to, instead of having a multiplayer game, just have something you can draw pictures using your GPS and your phone. Um, so you can visit this web page, walk around, draw a picture, send it to your mum. So this is what we kind of came up with today. Joe drew some pictures, uh, we built a website, and uh, it's all up on GitHub. And we've got some things we didn't, want, we didn't manage to do. Uh, if you want to switch the camera, we can see it on Joe's. Joe's been drawing some pictures outside. So you can see that kind of like squiggle up in the top um, is Joe on the stage right now, <laughs> um, and the rest is kind of abstract art. Very cool. All right. Um, next up, we have. Oh, that was draw. That was team draw, and that was number forty. So next up, I think we have GSM local. 
The idea for this came up from a friend of mine who uh, has a historic mill in the middle of a valley with no GSM signal, and people come and visit it and have no clue what it is. So the idea was to try and present um, some local information around that. So what, what we've got here is a, a GSM cell that's running locally here, um, and it prevents, presents some local information. Oh, just if I actually dial it right. If I dial 411, it will tell me something about where we are. Or not. I hope you are enjoying the OTA event. By the way, your IMSI is 2, 3, 4, 1, well, 0, 8, 2. That kind of proves that it really is this phone that's not put in the corner. Now, throughout its great code. Goodbye from open BTM Metro Bell. Please stay tuned So. What you've got there is a local GSM cell, which will talk to any of your phones if they were permission for it, that's covering this pavilion. It's using open source code, this is an open source handset, um, so you can build these things to run and do behaviors around the place. Um, we also did this thing, and I think this, there's no chance this will work, but I'll try it anyway. Um, there's a companion event that's happening in Hungary right now, um, and my friend who's over there was doing the same thing, so we're going to try and call him. I think it's really unlikely it'll work. Did that your call to Calgary? No. Okay, so uh, the idea though, though there is that you can have localized behaviors, joining up a couple of, uh, of sites, and kind of get a local phone system rather than a one-size-fits-all for the whole universe. And like I say, it's open source, any old handset will work with it. All right. Um, that was GSM Local, and it uh, is voting number 41. Okay, we have two more presentations, possibly. Uh, okay, so the next one up is Team Keithon. Team Keithon. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Okay. Uh, my name is Rich, and well, I've got an idea about Keithon. Actually, as you see here, Virgin London Marathon. If you ever want to, run, uh, to win a marathon, but you are not strong enough, or you are maybe very lazy like me, so I've got an idea for that. Uh, basically, uh, you can run a marathon online. You know, now you can do everything online. You can buy, you can sell online, you can meet online. Why not run online? So I've got an idea. Well, idea is very simple. Every uh, meter or every yard it's one keyboard on your um, uh, one key on, on your keyboard or um, one um, letter let's say one uh, character so to run the marathon you're, you're gonna need to have uh, let me get some numbers here okay one uh, the marathon distance is 26 miles 385 yards that means 46,145 yards if every yard is one Keyboard, there are going to be 46,145 keyboards or characters, and there are going to be 9,229 or Okay. Now, to run this marathon, uh, you can, to win a marathon or to win the, um, um, let's say, the world record, you're going to need to do that in less than two hours. Okay? That's, it's very hard, but it's achievable, and you're going to need um, speed around four, uh, four, uh, 75. Uh, words per minute, so you can do it. I mean, you can win even the um, a marathon on online. I mean, on the cable. Uh, actually, let me show you very quick how it's going. You're gonna get... <laughs> Sorry about that. You're gonna. Ah, that, the best thing. What you're gonna do? The text is gonna be uh, programmer book. So when you're gonna run a marathon online, you're gonna learn something like that. Uh, uh, for example, they're gonna be very good for kids, students to. Uh, learn to code or to or a program. We're gonna we're gonna have different things. We're gonna have <laughs> one mit, one meter races, sixty second races, one mile races, and different one. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> I think we're getting the signal. All right. Thank you. All right. So that was Keith on, and it was voting number twenty two. Actually, voting number twenty two for Keith on. All right, next, we have up scan Q. Scan Q. Okay. 
Okay. Um, we, one of the problems we've been having is, I think you've been queuing up to be 3D scans, and here and everywhere else has been that we have to uh, get you manually enter your name, so that then uh, then go in the queue and give your number. You know, somebody has to write their number. So what what I've done is created this thing through Twilio. It took not very long time. Uh, so basically, you can text your name to this number, and it will then send you a queue. So you send your number. So that that's that would be the number that you can take to the to the boot. Uh, that we're scanning, and that your your file will be uh, saved, and then later you you'll be getting other things. You get like um, messages and links, uh, but um, where sh where you should go to see to view your previous scan. So if, if you try to to um, send, uh, you can try that. Uh, send your name uh, to this text number, and. Um, you'll receive a message with an ID which you can then take it to our boots as well, but even after here, and you get your server scan. Um, that's about it really. Uh, we're going to add, I'm going to, I'm thinking of other things to add to it, to have augmented uh, stuff and code, uh, QR code and things sent to you as well, but that, that's the beginning of it. So thanks to Twitter, it's very easy. Right. Very cool. Uh, just hold on one second. Okay, what we're going to do is next up, we have two entries from the Kids Who Code category. These are kids that took part in the Code Club. And uh, so this, this one just now, it didn't have a number, I'm afraid, because we, we just got it as a late entry, so it's just a show, a show and tell, I'm afraid. Um, I'm going to ask all of the judges with your prizes, come back behind the marquee with me please, behind the screen, behind the stage. We're going to quickly go through all of our selections for the challenges and for the categories. While well, everybody here can just stay seated and watch the great stuff that the kids got up to in the, in the, in the Code Club workshop. So I'm going to have all my judges back through with me please. Bring your, bring your prizes with you where you brought them yourselves. Okay. The rest are all back here waiting, waiting for you. While the judges are going you. back, and we're gonna just wait for the uh, just wait for the demo from the children. I need to do a little bit of housekeeping. This is a coin. This side of the room is heads. This side of the room is tails. It's heads. That means you guys get to keep your beanbags. You guys, I'm afraid, don't. We're on a really tight budget this year, as you know, so we can't give all the beanbags away. So all the beanbags on this side of the room, we're going to nick and put over here. The runners are behind you. They're going to come and grab them now. No, no, no. no. no not it's now. not that I don't trust you. Going, no, no, now. We, we need... Now. 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 There's loads of beanbags on this side. I would come and get these beanbags. If I, you were on that side and you want a beanbag, I would come this side right now. Okay. <laughs> Don't fight on the beanbags. It's not seamless. Like. Like. You can fight with the beanbags, that's fine. We do, we do apologize for the disruption. I do. <laughs> I do. Alright, so now please have a seat because we're going to now have two special presentations from two teams that are eligible to participate in the audience favorite vote. Um, and uh, the first team uh, is, which came out of the Code Club earlier today, uh, is uh, team, guys, guys, team yeah, Makey, no, Makey, wait. team, okay. All right, hold on one second. Are we done? Okay, team Makey Makey Car Racy, please. Team Makey Makey Car Racy. Okay? Can we give them the answer? Uh, hello. Um, we obviously only did the Co Club little session earlier, so we didn't have lots of time. But yeah, uh, we, uh, we, we're using these Makey Makey things so we can move. 
uh, with that, so they're like a replacement for the allergies. So look, here's what I came up with. Um, we've only had like um, half an hour or something this morning, so it's not going to be perfect for anything. <laughs> We need to actually look at the screen. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Okay. Very cool. Very cool demo of uh, Mickey Mickey. If you're not familiar with Mickey and Mickey, you really gotta check it out. It's very cool uh, stuff um, to connect kind of the physical world to the to the to the virtual world. So the next and yeah, that's all. That's Luxley Park Rover. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Okay, sorry. Another. Um, so I did a different one. Um, you have to get. Five laps in 30 seconds. Yeah, so that, that's kind of it. It's also got a making control. Yeah, it's got a making controller. So you can control it um, using Play Doh and a couple of wires. So um, that's it, really. Yeah. Okay, okay. And we have one more presentation from this morning, or from this morning's Code Club session, which is Bletchley Park Rover, featuring the inimitable Adam and Ethan Cone Rose. Make sure this is working. Yes. Uh, yeah, yes, everything's good. Right, uh, so, um, what we have here, uh, down there we have a Lego Mindstorms robot, uh, connected up to uh, Raspberry Pi, connected up to a computer running Minecraft, but the Minecraft is actually running on the Raspberry Pi, uh, running a rather nifty little map here, uh, designed by Ethan today. Um, this, uh, you may be able to recognise this here. Um, this is the this is the drawing room. Um, if you go over this way, um, oh, and through there, oh, here we have oh, here's the lovely ceiling of the, uh, of the of whatever that room is called, and a little statue, a little statue of Churchill up there. Um, oh. There we go. So Ethan's telling me how to fly Minecraft. <laughs> uh, it says Prime Minister Churchill on it. Winston Churchill. Is that, there is a statue of Churchill over there. Oh, sorry, did you see that? Yeah. Prime Minister Winston Churchill up there. There you go. Um, and you may have noticed a little funny noise as I was moving around. So the cool thing is that as you move around in this map, um, because the uh, Minecraft is running on the Raspberry Pi, there's also that's right. So as you're moving around on the Raspberry Pi, there's also a little bit of Python running on the on, on the Raspberry Pi that's connected to the uh, to the NXP robot. Uh, so uh, as as I move around in the map, the robot is actually moving around with me. Um, oh, it's running out of batteries. It's not very, moving very far. So as I move around, it kind of squeaks. You probably can't see it. <laughs> there we are. That's right. Ethan, Ethan would like me to kill the slime, but I don't think that's going to help the robot. <laughs> so there we go. That's pretty much it. Ethan uh, did a, a, a great map, and I stuck the things together. So it's kind of half half adult, half kid. Fantastic. Okay, I think with that, that is the last presentation of the day. So actually, I want to give a big hand to all our presenters today, young and old. Come on.
All right, judges, can I have you back behind the stage again, please, with your prizes in hand? It's best to get people with people. Look at brothers' people. Oh, well, just, yeah, don't, you're not leaning against that, Jody, because it might fall on your head, so. <laughs> okay, I got my little helper, we're all set. <laughs> little helper up here, big helper back there. Okay, drum rolls. Here we go. The winner of the Innovation on Windows Challenge donated by Microsoft and Nokia, this gorgeous, awesome camera, Nokia Lumia, is team Philip and Cerise or Chris Willoughby with Pictocross. Come to the stage, please. Are they still here? Oh, good, they are. Come on up. Come on down. Give me that game show music. <laughs> Photo opportunities. But that's not all. We have a runner-up for Innovation on Windows Challenge, and that is Rosina, Xavier, and Clemente for Run First Run. Come on up to the stage. Samsung Smart Apps Challenge. Can I have Samsung to the stage, please, with goodies in hand? To be given at a later date, because they're not physically here. But this is just uh, a, a, a handover mechanism. The team that won is Eric Yuan for Super Eye. Come on up, Eric. Fantastic, well done. That's a, that's, that's a note three, yes? Come on over. A word from our winner. I would like to take the opportunity to say thank you to my wonderful wife. I love you, Charlie. I can't make it without this support. There's a little one on the way there. There's a little one on the way there. Okay, um, next up we have the National Museum of Computing Challenge. Can I have PJ up to the stage? First a round of applause for our awesome tour guide. And the donator for group space for microwave connections. Wi-Fi. Okay. Yes, a word from our our challenger. Uh, I want to thank you guys for just being so awesome, coming and helping and supporting the National Museum of Computing. Um, and especially to Cristiano, who's behind me, I think. Well, yeah, there he is, from PayPal. Now, as you know, uh, they offered for every one pound you donated to, uh, for every two pounds, rather, they will add another pound. He just told me they're going to up that to a 100% match. So for every one pound we get another, we also have another benefactor who's going to take the sum of that and double it. This means we're raised just under £4,000. Thank you all so much. Wonderful. Now you've got a bag of goodies being donated by the, um, the Museum of, uh, National Museum of Computing, and that is going to, to Lies the Danger for timelines for the National Museum. Okay, next up we have the PayPal APIs challenge. Christiana, can you come to the stage, please, with some beautiful leap motion? (laughs) 
the winner of the PayPal APIs challenge is Dylan Jones and Ali Bros or Bros. I'm sorry, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. For PayPal, come on up. not all, we have a runner-up, and that is Dom and Allison for Clue to You. Up with these this time next year at OVA 2014. Oh, high five! Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, it's, I, have I committed a public? Yeah, we're on. We're, we're in. We're always in. Um, but that's not all because Christiana has another announcement to make for a fifth winner. So, I also promised one of these to anybody who donated. So we had about 20 people donate, of which about 13 actually send me an email. Uh, I used a really, really awesome run, uh, a number generator called uh, Ruby Random. You know. uh, and the winner is Frank Wales. Of course, you still have opportunities to donate to this campaign. <laughs> Fantastic. So next up we have Best Science Hack. Can Brian from the Citizen Cyber Lab come up please? We've got some air quality egg Arduino shields, and they are going to Paul and Stephen for air sum. Paul Tan and Stephen Cooper. Some extras. Those are to be shared, one each. They're not all for you. But that's not all. We do have a runner-up as well, and that's Mike Kua for I Rule. Come on up, Mike. The nice, the best skewer morph entry. Right. Now you know how to do iOS uh, seven stuff. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Okay, next up is best mobile web HTML five entry. Can I have to the stage? Uh, who's representing Telefonica? Uh, uh, we have Francisco from T Telefonica Digital with some lovely Geeks phones and, and a book for HTML, CSS, HTML5 and CSS. Uh, the other one went Bok about. Um, and the winner is Sunil, Tyrell, Kiel, and Simon for Turf. Come on up. Congratulations. Um, and next up we have Best Android. Can I have somebody, anybody? Um, if you're standing in front of the piece of paper with Android written on it, can you bring that clip up for me, please? <laughs> Unfortunately, the guys from DroidCon weren't able to be here, and, and um, Robin from Manny couldn't stay today. So honorary donor, donor of the prize is going to Matthew Rawlings for Steganographosaurus. <laughs> well done, congratulations. Thank you for accepting that free stage for us. Next up, we have the best iOS entry, and you're winning a, um, a really cool book from, uh, from Manning, iOS in Practice. And that is going to Fraser Hardy and Hampus Algren for Kudini Beacon. The picture that's not up there is the Sunshine Touch book from Manning, and you can choose between yourselves which one you would like. Well done. Okay, next up is Best Game. Do I have, our, we have uh, Paul from 100% Indie. Now, uh, for a very cool in person experience at the Chilango offices as well as a subscription to Corona, and that is going to Dom Hodgson and Alison McConnell's for Touch Base Adventure. I want to see some pictures of you guys at the Chilango office. 
Getting that for some chips. We'll put them in the boxes for Ari. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, yes, you know what? Pictures of that. Cheers. Well done, guys. <laughs> a dog actually won this prize from Corona last year as well. Corona likes you. They love you. You're welcome. Congratulations, well done. Next up, we have Best Use of Other Features. Can I have... Uh, Francisco, would you mind bringing that up for us again, courtesy of Telefonica Digital? It is, um, it is an Arduino and third-party JavaScript. Best Use of Other Features. There we go. And those are going to... Um, the team, the virus team, Stephen Oglesby, Andy Bennett, Simon Hemmington, and Paul Johnson. Come on up. You're going to have to divide these amongst yourselves creatively. Well done. Good entry. Excellent. Thank you. Next, we have the best hardware hack. Winning Makey Make is donated by GitHub and um, another excellent book from Manny. And those are going to, um, do I have, somebody can bring up the hardware hacking card for me, please, if you're standing close. To a piece of paper. Awesome. Thank you, Christian, for helping out. I need another pair <laughs> I don't know if we'll actually need all of these. Let's see. These are going to Adam and Ethan Cohen Rose for Budget Park Rover. Congratulations, guys. Yeah. Spread, yeah, spread the joy of these Makey Makey kits across more of the Code Club attendees, please. But definitely keep one or two for, for, for Ethan or schools you're volunteering at. Those come courtesy of, of GitHub. Next up, we have the Best Internet of Things entry. Can I have Paul up to the front, please, with a very cool .NET Gadgeteera kit and some, and some Arduino Newtons, which are completely brand new. So very fun things to be done there. And they are going to Andrew Lindsay of Wireless Tweet Counter and Temperature, winning the first one, the .NET Gadgeteer, as the number one winner of the category. Mm. But we have a runner-up for the Newtons. That's not all. They are going to Paula Besson, Ryan Shaw, Joe Nash, George Hallam, and Craig Knott from, for their entry, Are You In? Which on its idea alone, and actually Paul saw what you were working on before everything broke, he knew what you were trying to do and thought it was absolutely worthy of a runner-up. So have, have some fun with those at the club. Uh, can, we get, can we get some applause from the audience for this team from the University of Nottingham? I hope to see you guys next year with more of the team. And for best 3D, and I didn't get um, a screenshot up here, what, uh, what Herx Angels Hercules is giving away is a 3D figure of yourself, and that is going to Ian Masters and Alan Thompson for cruising with Turing. So that will all have to be arranged with this. And we've also got some fantastic books that you can enjoy, which you can... The credit card, the uh, business card switcheroo, and the books. Well done, guys. That was really fun. Mm. The Enigma Challenge. We had a workshop doing the Enigma Challenge. Can I have... And I, I really needed a picture of this beautiful little penguin Lego set. And that is going to... Oh, Oop, and you're going to announce for me where it's going to because I didn't get a slide. Before. Okay, well, let me tell you the answer. So the answer to the uh, encrypted question was that Bletchley Park um, decrypted decrypted 203 messages uh, intercepted from between Paris and Berlin in August 1944, and the closest answer with an answer of 200 was Mike Cluett. Wow. So congratulations. <laughs> amazing. All statistics about this place are just amazing. All right, next we have Best in Show. Best in Show, we've got our two top entries coming up. You know the answer to the very last one. Best in Show is the big reveal. Um, Telefonica Digital, can I have somebody come up to the stage again for me, please? I think Dan's going to do the honors with this one. We've got Arduino Starter Kits, as well as some JavaScript Ninja-ing, and they are going to 
What is the danger for timelines for Tiananmen Square? It's a wonderful book. I've read it. I own it in hard and soft copy. So if there's anyone else who would be interested. Anybody really interested in JavaScript, hand up. There we go. First hand up was Kat right down here on the beanbags. <laughs> we'll do an honorary giveaway. We'll hold on to that for another, for another honorary giveaway moment. And finally, audience favorites. You've seen the statistics. It is indeed... Eureka Epiphany Aid, which is Craig Knott, George Hallam, Joe Nash, Ryan Shaw, Paula Besson. Come on down. <laughs> this is perhaps the prize for the hacking of the audience, folks. <laughs> but nonetheless, we'll earn do some creative fun with uh, Firefox OS phones, Geek's phones, and some Makey Makey Pits. Well done, guys. And, and PJ has already mentioned it, but uh, once again, if I could get Cristiano on stage to show you the statistics right now on Just Giving. I know we've done the, he's done the raffle already, but remember, this number is times four. This is going to be quadruple. It's getting matched like for like by PayPal. It's getting matched like by like for another donor. You have until the end of Sunday. The end of Sunday. That means you can do a little fun game. Um, to 982. It's 982 now. This is, I took a screenshot minutes ago. Really Look at that. Well done, nice. everybody. <laughs> and that is a wrap of the awards ceremony. Thank you, everybody.